Welcome to the Love or Leave the Law podcast with your hosts, Adam Ouellette and Casey Berman. All right, you're joining us on our inaugural podcast. My name is Adam Ouellette, and this is Casey Berman, my co-host. Say hi, Casey. Hi, how is everybody? Thank you, Adam. Well, this is the first of a pretty interesting podcast, one of its kind, and it's all about how to either love or leave the law. And this is going to be a pretty short podcast episode because in this episode we're just going to discuss a little bit about our paths so that you guys know more about who we are and uh, how we are able, even able to have a podcast and our expertise and a little bit about that. And then we're going to touch pretty briefly about what you can expect um, when you subscribe to this podcast. So Casey, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background yourself and then uh, I'll jump in and then we'll, uh, we'll get everybody an outline of uh, what we're going to cover on this uh, pretty cool podcast. Let's do it. Let's dive in our inaugural podcast. Adam, I'm so excited to, uh, to kick this off with you. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. If you're watching this, if you're listening to this, uh, we are very excited to have you. Uh, my name is Casey Berman and I run LeaveLawBehind.com. Again, that's LeaveLawBehind.com. Um, Adam and I have been working together for a while and we said, you know what, let's work and let's start putting information out there to help attorneys who are, are unhappy, who are disgruntled, who want to do something different and let's help them either find a way within the law to stay, um, really create a practice that aligns with them or let's help them leave and find a non-law and an alternate job. And so Adam and I have been thinking about what do we want to do and I blog, he blogs, we write. And you know what we understood was that there's a lot of ways for people to learn and consume content. We love to talk. We just love to share ideas. And so we kicked off this podcast. So we're excited to have you. Um, we'll get into more details down the road, but but we're going to be releasing and, and doing these talks, informal, formal, having interviews, having a bunch of stuff. And uh, we're just really excited about the change that we can we can create here. Now, let me just take a second and tell you a bit about myself and introduce myself, and then I'll hand it to Adam and let him do the same. But my name's Casey Berman. Um, I graduated University of California Hastings College of Law here in San Francisco in, in 1999. Um, I created LeaveLawBehind.com back in 2009 after I'd spent about 10, 12 years uh, in the law, and then I left the law in 04 and just really sort of chronicled my activities with uh, with being an unhappy lawyer. And then leaving and finding my way, doing management consulting, starting a company, and then ultimately becoming um, an online blogger and writer and, and entrepreneur. And so I'm still writing there. I uh, have launched a number of products to help people leave the law. I uh, met Adam through the Leave Law Behind community. And really my goal is to really help people, once they realize they don't want to be in the law anymore, to really help them find what I call their unique genius, find those skills and strengths that are really unique to them, and then be able to transfer it to a sort of an alternative non-law job. And so I'll be talking a lot about, once you do realize sincerely you want to leave law, what, how you can take those next steps to, to find a job sort of out there beyond the law. And that, that'll be my focus. Now, Adam, one reason we wanted to start this and do this with sort of the yin and yang that you and I have is because a lot of people don't want to leave the law. Um, they, they sincerely want to stay in the law. Their unique genius is really tied to being an attorney. And that's why we focus kind of the, the, the counter to, to my leaving the law is your loving the law. So tell the audience more about that. I've been a lawyer for 18 years. And for many of those 18 years, probably about 12 of them, I really did not like being a lawyer. And one of the things about Casey and the work that he is doing is that I'm aligned with helping lawyers either love the law through what I call Esquire Academy and a couple other of the uh, products that I'm going to be offering to lawyers and business people in general. And so when I got to a point where I was like, I can't take this anymore, and I thought about going out and coaching people, I said, you know what? I've gone through all of this. I've gone through law school. I passed the bar. I've learned how to run a business. I've read thousands of books on every single thing you can imagine, gone to seminar after seminar. And I said, you know, there's got to be a way that I can find what I truly am very, very good at as a lawyer and start doing more of that. And so I started to figure out what I loved about being a lawyer and what I didn't like. And one of the things we're going to teach you through this podcast is how to start doing more of what you love. And so my mission, even before I met Casey, was that I wanted to help lawyers love their lives, not just their careers. And uh, I was out in a seminar in San Francisco 
four years ago, I think it was. And someone said, oh, there's a guy that helps lawyers leave the law. You need to meet him. And um, they gave me Casey's info. And so I reached out to him uh, about a year and a half ago, something like that. And uh, when we connected, I knew that he and I were going to have a good relationship in terms of friends and then business because his mission is aligned with mine. We want to help people find a way to love their lives in general. And um, your career has a lot to do with it. Now, as an attorney, I pretty much practiced uh, the gamut. I didn't do bankruptcy or criminal law or personal injury, but I've done litigation, which is one of the things that turned me off about being a lawyer. Uh, other lawyers were just tremendously difficult to deal with. And uh, I've done uh, 5,000 real estate closings, commercial real estate. I represented condominium associations. I did a lot of business law. I did uh, business litigation. Um, I've done all kinds of stuff in the law and then ran successful law firms and businesses that were connected to my law firm for 18 years. And so I've got a pretty decent business acumen and I've been very successful as a lawyer. You know, I've, I, um, I made really good money. I've driven the big cars. I've had everything I've wanted, but there was something missing until I said, let me do more of what I want to do. And this is what we're here to help you with, to share with you our paths. The fact that we both weren't in a very good place as lawyers and Casey went as far as creating a whole program and consulting with people um, to help them find a pathway out of the law. So we have a good cop, bad cop routine. We're going to run with you guys here. Just a little joke, but I'll take the stance of how you can love the law and he's going to take the stance of how you can leave the law. And between the two of us, we're going to help you to find a place in your life that you can sit back and say, you know what, this is what I've been looking for because we've both done that and we're both here to share our expertise. And so Casey, why don't you share with them a little bit about what you're going to teach and um, some of the stuff that you're going to do. And then I'll jump in and then we'll wrap up this first episode so that they have a really good idea of where we're going with all of this. Yeah, no, it's great. And uh, it, it, it is a good cop, bad cop in a good way. We <laughs> want to show everyone uh, and, and we, we want to give you the, the two sides. You know, nothing is is really this way or that way. There's a lot of nuance to it. And particularly when you're thinking about what you want to do with, in your life, um, particularly if you put all this effort and time into law school and to building a career and going up the firm route or starting uh, or working in the government or starting your own small practice, you know, you're sitting there at age 33, 35, 38, 45, wherever you are and you're saying, oh God, what did I do all this for? <laughs> you know, I, I want a return on investment. Am I really starting over? And in some ways that is, whether you're starting over within the law to create that that spot for you, or you're starting over in a way of, of finding a new path in your life outside of the law. But what we really want to show is, is to kind of beginning sort of help you with this philosophy, help you kind of get in that mindset, get very mindful around it. Adam's great about really using techniques to kind of help you um, um, feel, uh, understand how you're feeling, really get to that point and kind of go through the weeds of understanding, oh, okay, that's the issue. That's the issue that I'm having. And, and once you identify the issue, whether it's a problem with someone, whether it's a problem within a certain personal accountability, or whether you just need next steps as to where you go next within or out of the law, those are the type of actionable steps that we also want to provide. So as far as leaving the law, you know, what I really want to focus on is, one, should you leave the law? I mean, let's not give law a bad name, right? Should Is this something that's just sort of a phase? Is there someone... Uh, it, within your practice that that you don't like and that you should stay in your law. And that's an analysis that we want to do. And then really moving on from there, what I want to teach is once you sincerely and authentically feel that, you know what, moving on from the law is right for me, or at least it's right to explore. Um, because there's no there's no zero-sum game here. The great thing about it is we can try a lot of different things in parallel. But once we realize that you do want to take a step to to explore this, we then work on strategies and actions to do that. We work on ways to reduce and mitigate the fears that stand in our way. We work on ways to um, uh, find a new identity beyond just being a lawyer and to feel good with that identity. We work on ways to get a handle on our money. 
how to feel one to deal with we have a high student debt how to how to not let that be an obstacle and then also how to get a better relationship with money so for many of us it's a it's a taboo topic we've had from since we were young um, we then get really actionable on finding what I call your unique genius which are those skills and strengths that are really unique to us that that really drive that that should drive what type of jobs and careers and roles we follow. So instead of going after jobs for security or stability or because our parents want us to, we actually flip it and focus on what we're good at and let that match to, to jobs and roles and careers. And when you do that, you've got an alignment, you've got a synergy, you've got a real connection between what you're good at and what this job description down the road um, actually calls for. That's the key for for motivation and confidence and, and happiness. And then you know where the where the rubber meets the road is really talking about ways to network, talking about ways to meet people that are in these jobs, which could be in alignment for you, um, and really finding and creating opportunities. To ultimately, you're you're in an interview somewhere, uh, getting a job or learning more about jobs that are really good fit with you, and you say, "How did this happen?" Mm. But it does happen. I've worked. Uh, Adam's proof of it. Uh, I'm proof of it. I've worked with so many people that are in jobs where they said, I never, first of all, I didn't even know this job existed. <laughs> and I couldn't even imagine that, that I would get it. But it happens. And those are the steps that I'm going to take to, uh, to really help, uh, help us all think about ways and actually act on ways to, to leave the law. Now, let me tell you, I'm going to have Adam now. You tell us what, uh, how you're going to uh, help people focus inward on, on loving the law. And I want to add one thing, which is, What's great about what Adam is going to teach is not only is it philosophy and strategy and really getting your, your arms around that, but he's got this phenomenal marketing background and phenomenal tactical skills I use. He helps me with LeaveLawBehind.com. And so once you kind of do align with what Adam's thinking about, he's just got all of these tools, solutions, online and otherwise, to really help you do it. And I speak from firsthand experience because he's helping me with this. So Adam, with that, why don't you get into more detail about about how people love the law and maybe just touch on some of the tools that you know about because you're kind of on the cutting edge where people can actually use this to help build their practice, create yeah. leads, and so on. Well, let's talk first about why I left the law uh, because it, as I've told you, Casey, if I would have met you back when I was going through this three or four years ago and I was making the decision to leave the law – um, my path probably would have been a lot easier. But one of the reasons I decided to go in to teach people stuff was I had satiated everything about practicing law. I had uh, done the litigation. I had done the closings. I had done all of the stuff that you do as a lawyer. But I also did all the stuff as a business person, which I loved more than practicing law. And when I got to a point where I was like, you know, I'm getting tired of it. I'm just I have done it all. I have been a success at it all. And at a certain point in your life, sometimes you say enough's enough. But people will stay in the law 40, 50 years and they love it. Or some people like my ex-partner are still a lawyer and doesn't he doesn't like it very much. He won't admit it to himself. But the thing about my path is I did find ways to really love what I was doing. And I could still be doing it. And it would have been very simple because I had it down to such a fine science. But when things become simple, sometimes you get bored. <laughs> so this is what I'm here to share with you, all of that expertise that I've learned over the years. And Casey hit the nail on the head. We're gonna talk a lot about running your law business. And regardless, every episode we have here, depending on whether we talk about leaving or staying and loving, it doesn't matter. It's all going to benefit you no matter what choice you make. And one of the reasons for that is we're going to teach you about life and business. And so stick with us, regardless of what the topic is, you're going to learn. And that's one of the caveats I wanted to tell you. Um, I have a pretty cool background in marketing because I did all the marketing for my firms and title companies. And at a certain point, uh, I was doing everything. I mean, I was marketing, I was doing closings, I was going to court. And needless to say, I had created a lot of stress in my life. And so one of the things I want to teach you is how to automate your practice, your marketing, and the day-to-day -day stuff. And that's going to be something we focus pretty heavily on because I feel that you need to leverage technology as much as possible. But I wrote a book, and um, you'll have an opportunity to check it out, an ebook if you signed up for the podcast through uh, loveorleavepodcast.com 
And if you haven't signed up there, please go ahead and do so because we got a lot of uh, free stuff for you. Casey has an ebook. What is it? 99 tips, ways. Yeah, 99 things to do right. 99 things to do right now to help you leave the law. It's sort of a very uh, brief but nonetheless comprehensive way to get you thinking about all these different ways. Uh, some will work for you, some won't. That's why I wrote a lot of them. But 99 ways to for you to really just get that baby step. A baby step's a big thing that I talk about, which is a very easy way to mitigate risk. We don't want risk, so. A baby step, if you fail at it, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So I wrote 99 baby steps, these tips that can really get you started on, on leaving the law, that can that can fit uh, with you, that, that don't take much effort, and uh, are easy ways to really build momentum. So that PDF is, is free, and we're just, as Adam said, going to be creating more and more content through the podcast uh, that, that you can use to... Uh, to really find your path. Yeah, and if you're listening to this right now through iTunes or one of the other places we put the podcast, you can go to that website, leave uh, love or leave podcast.com, and you'll be able to see the video version of this. But yeah. regardless, some of the other stuff I'm going to teach you is um, the, just how to overcome the challenge of being a lawyer, finding your niche, finding the place where you love what you do, and wanting. I want you to get up in the morning and love coming to work. I want yeah. you to have a career that you're proud of. We're going to talk to you about the 10 steps I write about in my book called Raising the Bar, uh, no pun intended, because it's about helping you raise your own bar and helping the profession at the same time. Because as we change ourselves, the profession starts to change, and we'll talk more about that as we go. It might sound a little strange, but a lot of us are left brain. Uh, attorneys are left brain, and, and I want to help to uh, ignite the left and right sides of your brain so that you can use some of that creativity that comes along with the right side of your brain to help you to set yourself apart from the hordes, massive amounts of attorneys that are out there. Um, and so we're going to talk about all kinds of business stuff. We're also going to talk about life skills. We're going to have uh, five-minute short episodes that Casey and I do individually um, where you can like life hacks and, and different quick hits or whatever we're going to call them where we're going to teach you stuff pretty quickly. So there's going to be a ton of content here from business to life to meditation to uh, intention and goal setting and, and how I was able to use Facebook ads to find my ideal clients in South Florida, uh, how to automate the whole process, how to automate a lot of the stuff in your business. And then lastly, we're going to talk about how to attract your ideal clients because a lot of us have clients that we really don't like. I went through that for many years, having clients I hated. It's like, oh my goodness, where are these people coming from? And figuring out, okay, how, are, how am I attracting these people? Because that's exactly what we do. And then how to get, find, and keep ideal staff. That was a big thing for me too. I went through all of the downs to get to the places that uh, I'm like, wow, things are really turning around. And I have people that care about what they're doing. And you're probably one of the, the ones like me that had people that really didn't give a shit, <laughs> unfortunately. And that comes through. And my goal for you with a lot of this is to create raving fans, clients that are raving fans that want to refer you business. That word of mouth is every bit as good as all of the other stuff we're going to teach you. Because without it, even especially in small communities... Word of mouth can be devastating to a lawyer. And so um, let's wrap up this episode and let's just tell you what's coming on the next episode. Episode number one, and as, for, as far as what we're going to teach you, um, is going to be about why the law sucks. <laughs> Some of the reasons I found and researched, and Casey's going to chime in because he felt the same way and why does it suck? And then what are the solutions? It's probably going to be multiple episodes. We're going to see because we're both a little bit long winded. So you're going to have to excuse us because we like to talk. We like to teach, but that's going to be the next episode. And I think it's going to be eye opening for most of you because most lawyers never look at why the law is such a difficult place to be. And a pro the profession in general has been on a kind of a slippery slope downward for the past 30 years. We're going to talk about that and more. But we're also going to give you some solutions. How can we fix what's going on? And it starts with us. So, Casey, do you have any parting words and before we end this episode? No, thanks, everybody. Really appreciate you uh, uh, listening and, and joining with us. And I do just want to say this. Before we go, uh, please come back for the second episode. Uh, we're really going to kick off 
uh, about why the law sucks and what you can do about it. Um, but really, I want to let you know that, yes, this is real. We are actually talking about this. And I, and I say that because, you know, I talk with a lot of people through Leave Law Behind, and they think that, you know, this is it. This is their life. They're living a lawyer. They're not that happy. And this is just what they need to get used to. But this isn't a joke. Adam and I are committed to helping attorneys either find that satisfaction and confidence within their law practice or helping them leave to find something that's alternative, that's really in alignment with what they want to do. This is real. We are actually doing this. I know all of us sort of live in our own little siloed areas. I know so many of us are afraid to even admit this. I was just speaking with someone from Finland actually yesterday who's on who who's part of the Leave Law Behind community and she said, I, I don't know anyone else out there. Who else can I talk to that's nearby? And whether it's Finland or whether it's Philadelphia, so many of us live in this little isolated space where we think we're the only ones. And I just want to tell everybody that you're not alone. There are so many of us who are who are unhappy and disgruntled. And this isn't about Misery Loves Company. It's about us finally having a voice, right. a public voice, a community for us all to come together. So one, it's a sanity check. We are we are not going crazy. And then two, once we realize that and smile that we're not alone, we now want to teach to be able to enable you to take those next steps. So please join us. Do it from the privacy of, of your headsets. Uh, but listen, and let's all create this together and, and really build this to a, a macro movement over the next few years. Yep, and you can find us uh, on the web, loveorleavepodcast.com. We also have a Facebook group. You can check out the link below. Uh, if you're on the website, check in this out, or they'll be in the show notes, and you can join that group. It will be a closed group so that you can say and, and do whatever you want in that group in terms of ask for advice and be brutally honest like the both of us Casey and I are going to be brutally honest with you about what we see uh, is wrong with the profession and brutally honest about life in general there's going to be probably some feathers ruffled as I go and I've spoken around town where I, I lived in Fort Lauderdale for a long time I ruffled some feathers because I'm brutally honest about this but a lot of times it takes us getting brutally honest before things start to change and what we want you to do with yourself is get brutally honest with you so that way you can let go of some of the stuff you've been holding on to and move towards loving your life because that is our mission. Thanks for being with us today. Check out the yep. next episode. We are glad you're part of this community, and we look forward to uh, hearing your comments and getting some feedback from you. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you.